right. So anyway, we are now starting now, Purple. Okay, we're after now that, we're now hello again to everyone. Technical difficulties. So this is yeah. the, this is the weird and wonderful world of Mr. Grey. By the way, I was gonna do you know what, if I'd known I was gonna have you all on on all the time, I would have called this podcast something else. Why? Because I, I I like I like the name. <laughs> I like the name as well, but I only named it that because I planned on like I didn't plan on having you on all the time. Oh, thanks. I was just no, no. I was just, I was just gonna like it was whatever was on my mind. I was just gonna ramble on, and that was gonna be an episode. But now you're, you know, you well, you're a co-host actually. You're not a regular. You're a co-host. We, 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 we just, we just do it this way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, right, so this is part five. I'm just going to fly through it now because we actually, yeah. <laughs> actually we don't record this the part. first uh, five minutes. Yeah. But uh, this, um, and once again, I'm with Purple, P-A-R-R-P-L on YouTube. It's if you want to go find him, please go find him. It's a very enjoyable channel. And we just spoke about our favorite Chinese food, my favorite Chinese food, but we're not going to go into it again. Because I can't be asked. <laughs> and it'll make him hungry. <laughs> it'll make me hungry. So yeah, so this episode, we're not going to... Stick to one topic, not that we ever do, yeah, but we decided we're just going to spout off some stuff and just see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Go with the so flow. So I did. I asked Purple something just now, but then I realized I wasn't recording properly. So I get him back to his me. answer. So, <laughs> so my <laughs> question, once again, Purple, is the paranormal on YouTube over? My answer, once again, is yes. And I believe it is over because I don't believe I don't I don't doesn't matter whether it's fake paranormal, real paranormal, it's all the same now. It's all the yeah. same stuff. Even that the the people that were covering the paranormal, like you know, uh, we both got a mutual friend in Caspersite. Yeah, yeah. Even he's excited to sway more towards UFOs not, and stuff he... because he's kind of sort of running out of content almost. Yeah, because he wants to keep it genuine. And it's it's not a slight against anyone who covers no. the paranormal because it's just the way it's gonna go. Like, like my, myself, I've been covering paranormal for five years. Yeah, <laughs> you know, five years. that must have been so hard <laughs> just to find fresh new things. Honestly, it gets harder and harder, and every and everyone will come across this, no matter what topic you cover on YouTube. Everyone will eventually either burn out or just think I got nothing more to say. There's yeah. only so many times you can say the same thing over and over. Yeah. You know, but the same subject. But, you know, like, I had this little... not a, was, it, was it a rant? I don't know. It, it wasn't a rant. In the car, it wasn't a yeah, rant. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a rant. It was just my spurting of my thoughts. But, like, you know, the staleness of paranormal YouTube right now. Now, top five, they've been stale for a long time, if you ask me. I yeah. have a lot, a lot of fun with them still, but yeah. in a different way, you know? And then obviously you got panel investigations and the clickbait titles. And again, like I said, if you didn't see that, I I get the cl- I do understand the clickbait. I'm not against the clickbait fully. You know, I do it in a yeah. fun way myself sometimes. But the ones where like we were terrified, we had to leave. We were gonna so die. Hor- <laughs> we were gonna die. We nearly died tonight. Yeah, that again. kind of thing. I I generally think right, and I didn't say in the car because there's a new thought coming to me now. I do think that that kind of clickbait title in every single paranormal video is what's killing the paranormal, if you ask me. Yes. I think so. Because everyone just labels every single, whether they're a serious team or a piss take team, everyone is labeling the same thing now, so you can't distinguish between them. Yeah. So everything gets labeled as bollocks. (laughs) And this this is one of the main reasons like why I go. So obviously I go out with Three Spires Paranormal, part yeah. of Three Spires Paranormal. It's because it's so relaxed and so different. And we are just a group of mates who just go to a place, talk, film. Like me and you talk now. We talk, we film, we do the, the calling out stuff. And then we leave. You know what I mean? There's no nonsense yeah. behind it, but we just have fun. We just record. It's not about... It, none of it is... You know, there's no... We're going to go in, do this. We're going to plan to do this. We're going to spend an hour doing B-roll here. We're going to do this. We go in, we film, we film each other. We talk, we talk about looks, we leave. And yeah. that, that's good. That's that's a good way to enjoy spending some time with your mates because it's exactly the same as like we went, when we went to Nano. Yeah. That was how that went. It was... I loved it, by the way. Yeah. I, I, and did, that I, is not actually, stale. No, I, I actually can't remember because I went there at the night. But in the day, did we do calling out stuff or did we just... I can't remember. Uh, yeah, we did. Yeah, I've got... Yeah, oh, we did. Okay, right. Yeah, we yeah. did, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Because I just went there for the you know, for the lulls and I just yeah. had, you know, had fun hanging out with you lot. So I had a lot of fun. You know, and I think that was poss- that's possibly the most important thing because if, you th- if we really think about it, 
You've got just as much chance of going to a building that's supposedly haunted, hanging out with your mates and seeing something, as you have by going doing Ouija boards and apps exactly. and spirit boards. You've got exactly the same chance. You you have if if they if exist, not less. obviously you know if yeah. they exist. Yeah, of course you have. No, no. The thing is, like, is I've said this before. If I was a ghost, <laughs> one day I will be. Who knows? <laughs> you yeah. Know, but like, if I'm a ghost, right, and I'm haunting some house for whatever reason. You know, I forgot to pay that bloody library card or something. That's why I'm still in the limbo. Whatever. Yeah. If I was a ghost and like I, I see this team come, or a group of people come to this house and they start calling, please make a knock. I'm like, I'm not a performing monkey. Exactly. Why should I make a yeah. knock for you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I, I, it, the whole... The whole investigation, right? The, the, I was a f- I've said this before. I'm, I've been a fan of the paranormal since I was a kid, right? For yeah. for whatever various reasons, and one of my favorite things to read about was Harry Price. Harry Price, the one of the original, technically parapsychologist, par- uh, paranormal investigators back in the nineteen thirties, right. and he would, you know, he he was the, he would use like um, um, uh, what are they call phonographs, phonographs. Call phonographs to the record player with a big thing, gramophones. Yeah, like, yeah. I, don't, I know what you're on about. Yeah, yeah. I do know. You'd use them to try and communicate with the the you know, the afterlife. Uh, right. Back then, they believed in the ether. You know, the ether being this ever encapsulating essence around everyone. Obviously, and then they made a big net out of it and used it to push the internet through. Yeah, <laughs> the ether, the ether net. <laughs> but but that kind of like uh, when you look back at that, you know, with um. What's that Bolly Rectory? I used to love reading about Bolly Rectory. And it was, do you know about Bolly Rectory? No, no. It was an old, I think it was a church, or a, not a church, what's it called, where monks go? A monastery. Monastery, yeah, you go. It was yeah. a monastery in uh, somewhere in England, and I think it got, it was burnt down in the 19, either 30s or 40s. And I always used to read about that, and it used to scare the crap out of me. And I believe Harry Price went there a few times. And, you know, it scared the crap out of me. But as you get older, you think, it was just, it was just a monastery. But the, the paranormal investigations back then, I liked those. Yeah. I liked those. It was a bit of mystery to it. You know, it was, it was a mystery to it. It was back at the time, you know, we didn't have phone apps. We didn't have bloody yeah. digital cameras and stuff. But no, it's it's like, if if you if you have, if you follow paranormal on online or on youtube uh, basically one in every four videos are a paranormal investigation and they all look the same to me now yeah yeah we've had this discussion we've had this discussion yeah, yeah. they all yeah, yeah they all look the same to me now and you know, yeah. all the titles are the same like i said there's, there's one standout one. there is one go standout on. go on and by the way by um, the way before we go further i should say yeah. i'm not knocking you know i'm friendly with a lot of them yeah. i'm not knocking yeah. them i'm just saying the way the format has gone is it's becoming a bit silly. I mean, dare, dare I say it, <laughs> right, for lack of upset, I think you've got to agree with me cool. that I think when it comes to production value in there and something different, Ghost Theory do do pretty fucking well. <laughs> ghost, ghost Theory production value are, are, are brilliant, if you ask me. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Weezer Brothers production value, yeah. great. Yeah, the, the, you, the, whether, you, whether you don't like them or not, you can't deny the production no, value. Exactly, is, yeah. Uh, in the old, and, when they do their and, and, and we people. know that a lot of the people try and, especially the Ouija Brothers, the Ouija Brothers have a lot of clones now. Y- yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's, and it's, the old, it's uh, because they're inspirational to a lot of people. A lot of people started yeah, no, it because of them. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that, but the original clones were most haunted. They were the, re- the originators of that style of yeah, animal yeah. investigation. Yeah. You know, the, the, before Most Haunted... I'm, I'm pretty sure most haunted became before uh, came before ghost apps. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty it did. sure. Um, so w- there was actually the first series of haunted homes came before most haunted. Oh, uh, okay, right. That was and, Mia Dolan and Chris French. Ah, uh, well, Chris French. He was in quite a lot of most haunted as well, wasn't he? So he was. Yeah. Um, yeah I've yeah. actually got. I've actually got uh, an actual conversation that I had with him recorded. Really? Um, that'd be, that'd be quite interesting. That'd be quite interesting. <laughs> quite interesting. Yeah. Um, and how he goes on about uh, Ian Lawman from Help My House is Haunted because he worked on Haunted Homes as well. Right, right. And then how yeah. he had a conversation with Mia Dolan uh, 
when he started to help my house, he's haunted. And she was basically like, well, I don't know you're trying to convince me you're real because I faked everything and I taught you everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's, that's crazy. Which, is just, which is just brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the, like obviously the originators in my eyes were most haunted. Uh, more like um, made the format famous then. Put it that way, right? Yeah. And obviously before that you had Ghostwatch. Now, I yeah. think, obviously I think most haunted or other teams that in that, uh, that time took... Uh, inspiration from Ghostwatch. Well, like Ghost some thing. of the same people that were the producers on Ghostwatch went on to Most Haunted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know that the the, the format back then it was it was really fresh. Oh yeah, it was yeah. exciting to watch. I used to love watching it. It was exciting. Oh yeah, to watch. yeah, me too. Even though I'm a skeptic, I even though I was a skeptic mm-hmm. back then as well, I still enjoyed watching Most Haunted and stuff. Although I couldn't, I could not get along with any episode with Derek McCorin. I just couldn't. <laughs> Which was every episode, pretty much. I know, much. I just, just couldn't, honestly. It's like, oh, no, like the, some of my mates who I'd watch it with, they were well into it. Like, oh my God, look, he's getting possessed again. Oh my God. I'm like, he's fucking serious. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. It was oh. so bad. But no, um, and like, obviously, fast forward almost 20 years now, and you have YouTube for the last, say, I'd say the last six years is when the paranormal part of YouTube kicked off. That's what I think, anyway. Because, like I said, I've been watching this way too bloody long. But I do think it's getting a bit stale. And I, like I said, I think because of the clickbait, clickbait titles, uh, the the same format on every video, whether they're fake or yeah. real, it's all becoming too indistinguishable indistinguish, now. Yeah. So, yeah. This is why I had to step away from it. Because, like, you know, the, the conversation we've had lots, loads and loads of times is, I, I just, like, for me, doing the same thing over and over and over again drives me mad. Yeah. So I just kind of walked walked away from it. I just put my hands up. I was like, I just need to find well, something new that's more fresh for me. Well, yeah. Well, I, you know, as you know, I, I haven't pulled away from it. Yeah. But I haven't made a full blown debunking for. I can't even remember the last time I made one. And I always say because there's nothing out there to debunk as yeah. far as I'm concerned. You know. So even though I still enjoy the paranormal for the laughs. You yeah. Know? And it can I, be really comical. It can be hilarious, and I do genuinely enjoy watching some teams as well. Not for the ghostly stuff. I just watch it like watching the interactions with them and yeah. you know, the, the fun they have. So, yeah. you know, it's not like I'm completely over it, but I watch it for different reasons now. Yeah, so. But yeah, what, where do you think the paranormal, say, in the next three to five years, where do you think that's going to be on YouTube? Do you think it'll still be there or do you think people will move on? I think it'll, I think it'll always be there. Yeah. Because you, you, you still have... <clears throat> To give the pun the die hard following <laughs> you will yeah, always have yeah. that die hard following but i think even the channels that we saw go to astronomical levels even really haunted as now just completely plateaued well f- to be honest with you in his defense i can't believe i'm defending him <laughs> mm. he gets the same amount of views every single video he does he gets... but look how much that has dropped no i know yeah he's like, like three years 000, ago yeah two hundred thousand subs yeah to, uh, with 20 to twenty four thousand views or something which is you know it's not bad but for the amount of subs you should, probably should be getting a bit more yeah but the thing the thing with really haunted even though he's been debunked a bajillion times yeah on YouTube, <laughs> yeah there'll always be people out there like oh those debunkers are wrong yeah and you'll exactly ne- you'll, yeah. ne- you'll never convince them and I think there will always be a cor- I think there'll always be a corner where the paranormal is really loved on YouTube. Yeah. But I think it's going to take a sudden something very new I to see, come along. I do no. Well, this is the thing, right? I do. I do think something needs to be new in paranormal, and you know, I'll, I know we'll get the argument and say, well, that's how a paranormal investigation is done. I'm going to bet my... there needs to be something new. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but then my... I'm talking about the real people now, you know. But then my my answer to that is, if now, say, you've been a paranormal investigation investigator for, say, 10 to 15 to 20 years, whatever, right? And you've yep. been making videos on YouTube, great, right? But if now you've been using the same equipment, you've mm-hmm. been calling out for all those years, you've never, ever seen anything. Don't you think maybe that's not how it's done? <laughs> you know? Yeah, maybe it, we it, it's the definition something. of madness, isn't it? Doing yeah, the same yeah, thing over and over exactly. again and expect a different result. Yeah, rinse and repeat. You know, maybe yeah. if you're not getting anything after all those years, maybe that's not the way to do it. And maybe and you should is, try something yeah. new. That's ab- that, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, you are so, absolutely correct. 
Because yeah. if you if you are doing a job that you you know if you're doing if you're on a career path that you absolutely hate, right? Yeah. Yeah, but you you enjoy <laughs> you enjoy the your career path. You know what I mean? You you don't even like your career path. <laughs> It pays the bills, Purple. That's about it. <laughs> but if you were doing, if you were still doing the graphics, the graphic design for a company that you loved it's, and it was something you were passionate about, I'm not going to go into detail. But it's because yeah. my job is more corporate. It's not fun. It's yeah. corporate, so yeah. that's why. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, go on. Sorry. So, but <laughs> I think then you get to the point where you like, you make the decision that I even in your head. Like you've, like you've even said, like we, I need to make a change. I need to do this. I would love to make a change. I'd love to do this so I can be at a different point in my life. Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. human nature when something isn't working for you to realise you need to change it. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. To make something work, and so you're absolutely right what you say that yeah. if the, you know, if they've been doing exactly the same thing for twenty years and nothing has worked, yeah. then it's just possible something wrong. Well, that's that's the part I find a bit baffling <clears throat> when you're know, like real investigators and talking, not yeah. fakers, obviously, but real investigators when they say, you know, I've been doing this for years. We've heard things like once in a blue moon. Mm. Right? I'm like, so why do you keep doing it? Why do you keep why do you keep pushing forward, paying all this? You, know, you pay a lot of money to go yeah. to these, um, these taunted places. So why do you keep doing it to yourself if you never find anything? If you, oh, you, if you had like a knock six years ago, why, why don't you either find something else, or why don't you change something to do with it? You know, be, be the, um, be the originator. That's my new word of the day. You know, yeah. of, uh, of <laughs> like the originator. <laughs> of new be, be Mr. Gray's second channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the originator. The originator of yeah, but no, just try like new methods maybe. Like like I always bloody say though, who the hell came up with the first? Who's the first person to come up that EMF was detecting it? SLS EVPs. Yeah. Who was the first person to come up? Well, in fact, Harry Price with the EVP stuff, but we won't get to that. But like maybe try different methods, but like yeah. more in the realistic realms. I say realistic. It's, it's so weird for me to say that because of, yeah, because it you return you to the approach of. <laughs> approaching yeah. an unrealistic realm yeah and i do try to approach it from their point of view i've this is part of my experiment i'm doing yeah. currently on you know, my first episode and that's that's partly what i'm doing is like i'm trying to think like a believer you know yeah and i think just because i think you, you know me and you both know you've had comments throughout the years of the only reason you don't see anything is because you don't believe because i've seen these comments it, I've, I've seen that comment <laughs> so many times <laughs> but and then you always reiterate reiterate but i'm an open skeptic i'm an open skeptic i, I say this all the time i can't yeah. i can't i can't say it anymore i am an open skeptic I am open to any possibilities. I am open to we nobody, nobody in the entire universe, well, planet Earth, sorry, knows what happens after we die. Nobody does. I believe. I. How can you though? How can you unless you've died? I just just think it's. I mean, may, maybe I'm just Mister Negative on this, <laughs> cool. but I just think you just go into an hole. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, my logical <laughs> brain does tell me that. Yes, yeah. Yeah, of course like, not, like but... obviously, like we've had this sort of, like when my brother passed away. Like my last words to him <laughs> were that he, he should come back and haunt me. Yeah, but don't and, open my kitchen cabinets like every other fucking ghost. Yeah, and I and I do I do sometimes hate saying that kind of thing because you yeah. know there's uh, there's people out there obviously they are, they have hope that one day they'll see the loved ones. I hope. Try, right, oh, yeah, because, absolutely. Yeah. I say this right now. I, I hope I am wrong about what I think is going to happen. Yeah, I hope. Oh, I'm me wrong. too. Yeah, praying, praying. I'm wrong. Me too. I'm really claustrophobic. You know, so... <laughs> yeah, but no. Um, but yeah, on the paranormal side of YouTube, I do think it's got a bit of the same. Mm. And I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I watched too much, or I watched too much over the years, or maybe you ingested too much. Uh, yeah, I've taken in too mm. much. It's like, um. But like imagine, should... imagine again coming back to Casper. So imagine how he, how he must feel. He's just five videos a week. <clears throat> yeah, five videos a week on it. He's been doing that for three years. Paranormal now. Well, he started off as a gaming channel. Yeah, he think. started off. He started off a VR yeah. horror. Like I think, like everyone, I started off as yeah. a gaming channel as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did it was not. Easier times. <laughs> <laughs> 
But and yeah, no. Like, I... you, have to, you have to think how, how like he must feel with stuff like that. I mean, my question to you would be: If you stopped covering paranormal channels tomorrow, what would your next mm. video be? <laughs> well, if I just bl- if if if, if you were just like that's it, I'm if done I... with paranormal. If you could make any video that's not a short film or a skate based film, what would you what would what would what would the world of Mister Gray be? Conspiracy theories. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I almost said drama then, but no, I'm not. No, no. But I, but current current affairs. There you go. I, yeah. I, I like. I I keep up on a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, not just paranormal. I keep up on a lot of stuff. I watch a lot of stuff about that stuff. I would love to talk about it sometimes, but because of my the direction of my channel, I don't make yeah. videos about it. But that can, I probably would. You know, like I said, if it wasn't the filmmaking the side. Yeah. Because I definitely do that. Yeah. I probably talk about what interests me in the world. Sort of like popcorn. Is it popcorn planet? How that started? I don't know. I that don't kind know of started that way, and then it got into current affairs and news <clears throat> and stuff like that. And now it's it's actually like a really like big source of all that. Yeah. But I know channels, right? Because uh, like I've been on YouTube. I know my, this channel has been on YouTube since 2014. But I had an original. I had a channel before that from 2011. And I was friends with a lot of channels. Some of them rose through the ranks quite high, right? And um, when they started, most of them started as gaming. Yeah. And then some got into reaction. And then others, the, the ones who have made made it the highest. There you go. If you want to make money on YouTube, this is what you need to do. <laughs> right? mind the person he's talking about is his friend. We can't say his name, but it rhymes with Mr. Feast. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it, you you need to become a channel which talks about the biggest drama on YouTube. Not I'm not talking about yeah. paranormal. I'm talking about anything. Yeah. You you you, t- you see the top tier channels like uh, Moist Critical. Yeah. Um, uh, others I can't bloody remember the names of now. They all talk about drama stuff. Yeah. And that's what everyone wants to see on YouTube. Yeah. Dra- like you say, drama sells. It's the same yeah. with paranormal drama cells. Yeah, it does. Yeah, massively. <laughs> right? Coming back to it really paranormal, does. yeah, drama cells in the paranormal. Like um, there's a couple of um, channels a couple of years ago. I tell you, oh, what, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to mention Rick debunks. Do you, do you know who this? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of all that. I've seen yeah, the yeah. back and forth of the debunks. videos and when, everything. Yeah, when when I started debunking videos, Rick debunks came about like six or eight months later, and he he became very friendly with the shape. Yeah, yeah, and they were very close—not close, but they were really mm. good friends. And you know, it was only us three, right? But I always kept myself to myself because that's just the way yeah. I am. And um, <laughs> then it got to the point that Rick the Bunks—he turned into an exposed channel. He stopped. He didn't. He he, he still made debunking videos in the sense, yeah. but he became—he basically, I just exposed you, bro. He was Canadian, <laughs> so you know he's like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he just went too far, if you ask me. And then obviously him and Shape had a falling out, and Rick DeBunch yeah. said some really nasty shit. Yeah. And he went away. He got banned off YouTube. Um, I think I can't remember why. But he got banned off YouTube and he tried to do his stuff on Facebook. I think he got banned off Facebook. Mm. And he's no longer around now, but he went the exposed route, the drama route. Yeah. You know? And it didn't work out for him. <laughs> no, it didn't. No, <laughs> you know? no it, it, always, it always backfires eventually. You, you, you have to, if you're going to go the drama route, right, you have to be careful how you do it. If, yeah. you know, if, if you want to talk about, oh my God, um, Taylor Swift, I can't believe what she said. If you want to do that, that's fine. If, if then all of a sudden you're going to say, I think this person is an offender. I'm not going to say the word, yeah. but you know what I mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's going too far. Yeah. And some people, some channels, they tend to skirt over that line a bit sometimes. And sometimes it works for them, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. But uh, yeah, drama sells at the end of it the does. day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could just be like me now, and I just don't care what sells anymore. I just do what I do. Like oh, I always said, do whatever the hell makes well, me this, happy. Well, this this is what I do, and like you know, I've accepted now. I'm never going to be high, high up there, which is I'm fine with. By the way. Yeah, and I got to that point. It's just when you get to that yeah. acceptance point, it's like a freedom, and it it's like yeah, to- totally fine with it. Yeah, but yeah, because I found when the moment I did that, I wasn't worrying about oh, I need to find 
because it became a point, and I know you would have been there. I need to find a video to do this. I need well, to find Lord this. Science. Lord science. And now it's more of I could be scrolling through, I can be doom scrolling on something, and then I'll get five seconds into something. I'll be like, now that's a video. Yeah. And that's a video I want to make, so I'll stop, and then I'll come and record the video. Yeah. Well, like, with, the the, I... with the live streams and everything else, it doesn't matter what I, I do with them. I'm just going to do what's the most fun for people that are involved. This is, this is why I occasionally like making videos about, like, um, I married a ghost and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> because they make me laugh. <laughs> exactly. And the, the, they are... Uh, they're, a corn, they're a corner of YouTube, which is brilliant, because... Yes, they, they can delve into the paranormal. And these people yeah. aren't really doing any harm to anybody. No, no. And, some, and it is funny. It is funny when we look, you know, we have to look at the funny side of life sometimes. Yes. And I think that, that's, more, that's more and more important as time goes on as well. Yeah. So going further on the paranormal, because I suppose we're sticking the paranormal with this yeah. now. And, you know, if you've got this far in the video and like, oh, motherfuckers, I can't believe this ain't the paranormal. We're not slate in the paranormal. We're just stating some facts and opinions yeah. and observations. Apart from you, I'm slating Apart your Apart from you, you, you know who you are. Yeah, you. <laughs> and your uncle Joey. <laughs> what do you think about TikTok possibly getting banned? As this has been going on for years, hasn't it? For five years, we've been hearing TikToks getting banned. No, 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 no. But do you know the most latest stuff for the last say? Six months Go on TikTok. Do you know? You do you not know? No. But all right, it's interesting. I would have thought you as a big TikToker would know. I love this. me some TikTok. <laughs> but no, well, anyway. to, to be honest, I, I know there was a lot of talk around TikTok because a, I know a lot of people know about this. So, um, a person who was went to the same school as me, mm -hmm. um, they were a lot younger. Uh, they actually. Unalived live on TikTok. Oh, um, okay. It was it was in the papers, <clears throat> and uh, there was a big thing, big hoo ha about banning TikTok then because it had been kind of a yeah. thing that had been, apparently had been ongoing, and that never happened. But I would like to hear what's going to ban it now. Well, <laughs> well, this could actually happen, mind right? Ooh, so TikTok is owned by a Chinese company, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the name of the company now, but it's, it's, it's it was created and owned by a Chinese company. China has its own version of TikTok, but it's called something else over there. Um, so the US government, right? The US government, they took TikTok to court for the last like couple, say over the last year, I'd say, right. saying, you know, we don't want you taking our data and giving it to the Chinese government. Right. I don't know what proof they have of this, but, you know, they've been, it's gone to Supreme Court and everything. Right. right? So they've been given, I think it's, they've been given either, Three or six months or 90 days. I can't remember now. They've been given a certain amount of time. That the US government have given TikTok a certain amount of time. Either sell it to the US yeah. or close it down. Okay. And, and that, is a, that is a very high possibility that wow. it will go away. That's gonna, One of those two things are going to happen. But the, the CEO of TikTok has come out and said, we would rather close it down than sell it to the US government. Wow. So there is a very high possibility that TikTok is going away. And obviously, a lot of creators on TikTok are, you know, like pleading with the, the government, you know, please don't do this to us. This is, a, yeah. this is our income. It's, you know, it's, it's a job to a lot of them and they make yeah, a lot of money. A... Some of them do, even though TikTok doesn't pay per view no, it, as no, much it... as you've, YouTube, nowhere near. Nowhere near. But, you know, a lot of people have sponsorships and all that mm. stuff, you know, and a lot of people make money. And even though I always take a piss and I say I hate TikTok, I'm not a fan of TikTok. I'll say that right out right now. I say it all the time. I'm not a fan of TikTok for various reasons. But at the same time, I would never see, want to see that go away because I believe in being able to express yourself on whatever platform you want. Right? I mean, it'll come to the point where the only thing we can debunk is OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, but you have to pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> that can't be, you'd actually be paying money then to debunk something. Yeah. <laughs> They're not real. Debunked. <laughs> I'm just zooming in. There's a scar here. One. There's a scar here. And as you can see, there used to be a penis there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. Uh, so, so what do you think about uh, that? Then? Do you think, what do you think is going to happen with TikTok? I think the the, the Chinese are the, the the Chinese will do what the Chinese always do, yeah. and whatever's in their best interests. 
it would not be in their best interest to sell TikTok to America, to America under any circumstances. No, I, I agree. I don't think that's going to happen. No. I don't think that's going to happen. And like I said, unless... And if this is only going to boil down to whether the US government changes their mind, which I don't think they're going to... Mm. You know, I, th- I think is... all that will happen is the Chinese will probably close it down and then just open up like TikTok 2 or... TikTok chock or something like this. I don't think they'll be allowed. Or that's, I think I, that's some, I think this that's I mean this has gone so far now. This to, in the courts in America, that it's sell it to us or don't exist. This is as simple as that. I don't think they can open a new. They wouldn't be able to open like a sequel. No TikTok two. That'd no. be great. TikTok no. <laughs> two. Well, if they close it, we'll start it. We'll yeah. start a GoFundMe, and then we will create TikTok two, <laughs> where you can only post fake paranormal videos. That would happen. All you're allowed to post. Isn't you got a real those... one? No. <laughs> <laughs> not interested. Can't, can't upload it then. Can't upload it, no. Not interested in you. In your real ghost. <laughs> Don't care but if I... it possessed your sister. <laughs> I think um, I think YouTube Shorts will overtake it. YouTube oh, yeah, Shorts. YouTube, YouTube Instagram Shorts Instagram Reels. Ridiculous at the moment. It's ridiculous at the moment. Like, I always say I, always say I hate Shorts. But I'm one of those people who sometimes when I'm in bed, I'm doom scrolling. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. God, but I think for us, it is YouTube Shorts is great because you can get to the doom scroll and you can actually find find something that's intriguing enough to make a video over. Like the leprechaun dude, he was from a YouTube short. What the hell is the leprechaun dude? So I made a video on the guy that's the last leprechaun. <laughs> oh right, hunter. Yeah, 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 I remember now. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. he's he's come off a YouTube short. The woman that likes to do it with lamps and she's been married to the Statue of Liberty or whatever, she was off a short. And these are the shorts that get recommended to me. I get this and I get golf. That is it. <laughs> that is all I get recommended to me. And some people like being possessed in like West Africa and stuff like that. I haven't seen a good possession video for years myself. No. And yeah, no. you're right. You're right. They usually come from the African continent. Yeah. And, <laughs> and at least... Right, if if this, I think this is great, and I think you briefly touched on this. I, I'm pretty sure it was you that touched on this before. I think it's brilliant that every country has their own formidable type of ghost. So you oh, yeah. go to the you go to Asia. You have every every ghost looks like the ring girl, the jinn. Yeah, yeah. The, you have the, the jinn, jinn, which you have in like is the Indonesia Arabic ghosts. And all that. Yeah, yeah. Indonesia. So you have those, and then in in, in England. You don't have anything. They're just open kitchen cupboards. That's all they do in England is they open <laughs> well, kitchen cupboards. Well, we, well, no, we do actually because no matter... And we have like at least three sightings where I live right now. The grey lady and the white lady. Oh, yeah. That's what yeah, we because, have over in the UK. <laughs> beca- because it grew up and we weren't a very diverse country. So you can no. the darkest the ghost got were grey. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, of cool. British people. <laughs> But that Any, was that was the that was the creation that was as creative as we got really. Yeah, every castle or every manor has yeah. a grey lady or a white lady. Yeah. I can guarantee bloody to it. So that's what we have in the UK and America. Then they have pretty much skinwalkers. Yeah, that's and it. then then of course you know you go to Romania. They don't fuck about with ghosts. They just have vampires. Like, we, we, oh, don't, yeah. we don't we don't do ghosts. <laughs> yeah, but it's not just vamp- well. No, sorry. Yeah, no, Romania vampires. Yeah. But there's one country. Uh, I can't remember what it is, but they have like sort of a mix between a gin and a vampire, and they hop. <laughs> have you seen those? Like ones? a gin pyre. <laughs> a gin pyre. It's a gin pyre mixed with a kangaroo. It's a gin no, pyre roo. And I've seen videos of people absolutely freaking out because in the in the darkness there's hopping white ghosts coming towards them. I, Obviously, you know what I like. Mate. I like the South Americans because they they <clears throat> they go full in. They have like El Chupacabra. Yeah. yeah, and then everything else is a bruja. <laughs> a bruja. It's the witch, that, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah, the, the witch, bruja. Yeah, yes, right the bruja, there, yeah. yeah. And, and then I just jump straight from there to El Diablo. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> this no is why I get no mames all the time. Yeah. <laughs> there is no in between at all, and it's wonderful. <laughs> it's, I, I do lo- love that, you know, cultures have different belief systems and not only religion now but like paranormal yeah. belief systems yeah. systems i think it's great and you <laughs> see and the best way to see it is through fake paranormal oh yeah abs- absolutely absolutely 
But where where did you, what do you, what would you like to see in in fake paranormal? Just so we know who's going to be fake then, because they'll do it if they ever see the podcast. What would I like to see in fake? Yeah, what would paranormal? you like to see done really well? Um, poltergeist stuff. Not, and I I don't mean um things bloody the spatula flying yep. off the car, but I mean people being thrown across the room. That's what I want. That'd to see. be wicked, wouldn't it? That's where I want to see. That'd be really, really good. That'd be. I've you know what? That that sounds that sounds like that, uh, that we we could pull that off. Absolutely, no, hundred percent, we could pull that yeah, off. Yeah, we we could absolutely pull that off. I, I got a motion seen... tracking rig. <laughs> oh, no, nice! Well, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 so up for that. Yeah. <laughs> so up for that. We'll we'll uh, I'll dye my beard and put like a wig on so they don't notice us. <laughs> and, and I will let you dye your beard and put a wig on. <laughs> Just have me on the camera. <laughs> yeah, but you, we can actually make it real. You should put a green screen suit on, then you could just come up to me and go. And I'll just go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what though? I just I just remembered. Do you know there is one actually one paranormal channel who has done the throwing of the body across the room. Not it wasn't across the room, he sort of threw himself, <laughs> he threw himself off a rock. But it's actually really oh, well No, it's actually really well done. Urbex Hill. Have you heard of Urbex Hill? Yes. He was I think you told me ex- about them. Yeah, probably. He's an urban explorer, but he does paranormal stuff at the, you know, uh, now and again. And he's like, Oh, I'm real, bro. In fact I had um I can't remember who sent it to me now. One of my viewers sent me a DM. Uh for, I'll, I'll get to my story now, but one of my viewers sent me a DM about three years ago. Because I made a video about Urbex Hill. And in the, I can't remember who it was, not the viewer, but they had a private message from Urbex Hill. They said, I'm friendly with Urbex Hill. And he sent me this message to send to you. <clears throat> to me now. And this was from Urbex Hill. And it was, it was like, it wasn't it wasn't directly to me, but in the message it was, please tell Mr. Gray to debunk me. He can't debunk me. <laughs> like <laughs> it's under there. I was like, I already did two weeks yeah. ago. You know? But, <laughs> but, but he... he he says he's real, but if you watch his videos, no. Yeah, it's clearly not. No. But the one he did where his, he, he was... There's a static camera, obviously. Obviously, mm-hmm. because it's easier. Of him in the distance sitting on something. I think it's like a rock or a table or something. And he flies off the table and bounces off his back. It's really well done. But you can see the cut where it happens. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, I'll give him his props. I haven't seen that be done on Paranormal Channels to date. I think it was, no, because, it was really because good. because me and you know what goes into it as well. Yeah. And to do it in a really convincing way, while it would be like we we could we could pull that off in no time at all. Right? Because oh, yeah. I actually planned out a I planned out a shot. I actually planned out an entire like minute's worth of a possession scene. Right. Uh and I won't give away because I would love to make it. I won't give away how how I know I would do it. But I could do it in one take without any, without any cuts, and then just take the rest out in post. Yeah, it, yeah, definitely. Like yeah. you're looking at someone who threw himself down the stairs for a bloody video, backwards. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'd absolutely do it. But no, Urbex Hill, I think, is the only one who's tried that. And you know, on face value, first viewing, it looks really good. But then when you look at it, oh no, I can see it. Yeah. But you know, but I haven't seen anyone try that since. Probably because it's too far. It's going too far. It is, but I think is it really going too far when all these people are nearly dying and then <laughs> going to these locations and do you know what I mean? It it, it you know, where where is the line? And I think at the end of the day, it's it's it is an entertainment platform, and it even it is, even yeah. if you've got educational content on YouTube, it is still only to be treated as entertainment. Yeah, it is in the like, terms of service. It's why. You know, that law came in in October and people got dead excited about oh, it. Oh, you have like, to be, yeah. uh, what is it? You have to be upfront about it or something or something Yeah, like that, but it? it didn't actually apply to YouTube because everybody agrees to the terms of service, which says that everything that you watch or upload on YouTube will only ever be entertainment. Hmm. And nothing more, nothing less. It's entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there is no court in the land that's ever going to... You know. No, 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 no court yeah. will ever do whatever they, you know. No, because it was, it's part of the whole, because it all started with the, you, so people in America who don't know, you have like Jerry Springer, we had someone called Jeremy Kyle. Oh God, I couldn't stand that show. Well, basically what Spiced happened it. on Jeremy Kyle was somebody came out, 
Uh, went up to the guy. You probably remember it was on the newspapers. Head butted him, broke his nose. Yeah. Yeah. Then that guy took him to court, and then the judge, one day, threw it out of court and went, "No, it's equivalent to bear baiting." <laughs> yeah. It's like it was just you're just basically putting on a Victorian freak show. <clears throat> So he just threw I, it in court. He's like, you were, you were both stupid enough to go on there. And now you dirty <laughs> laundry in public. And then so many laws came in around that. Yeah, yeah. There's many things I hate. Well, there's not, no, sorry, what I meant to say is there's not a lot of things I hate in the world. Jeremy Kyle is one of them. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I despised that program. I, I hated the way he spoke. I, I, you know, the, the people who went on there, some of them just wanted their five minutes of fame. Yeah, yeah. Other people were on there vulnerable as fuck. Yeah, and absolutely. And yeah. speak to them like absolute dog shit. Yeah. And did you know why Jeremy Kyle ended? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because of, yeah, well, yeah. it was it was a, it was a few things, wasn't it? So it was the person that hurt himself a lot oh, no, to maximum hurt. hurt levels yeah he didn't hurt himself he yeah. ended himself yeah. yeah 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 basically and because because jeremy kyle accused him of something and it turned out it wasn't true yeah it was the the whole lie detector thing wasn't yeah, it? yeah lie detector lie detector is mm. a bollocks honestly yeah I, I, do never to put anything into the bloody lie detectors like i can't believe they are still used in parts of the world and do you know right that there are some governments in the world that still use one of the biggest perpetuated myths about seeing if somebody's lying. What is the what is the old the old perpetuated myth to tell if somebody's telling a lie? Oh, Do you know uh, this one? like eye contact or something. No, so they look it's... down and to the left. Oh, down and to the left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's never existed. It was no. created. It was created. It was it was taken from a book. Yeah, no, like, I think most... was it Clive Costler. I think it was taken from I a Clive know. Costler book or something like this. But it, it's never been a thing. But you ask people now, and they will run with that like it's absolute fact. No, most of the tells are bullshit. Absolute yeah. bloody bullshit. Like they, they, like they say, um, you're not confident if you look away. You should look into their eyes. I don't look like a psychopath. Look, no? would, oh, hello, my name's Dan. How's yeah, I've got all this time to do that to teach myself to look at people's eyes. <laughs> yeah. No, the, yeah, no, I can't, I can't believe like there's like like you said down to the left. Lie detects, and I can't believe they are still used in legal basis in parts of the world. Nor me, because my question has always been, and this is a hypothetical for you. So a lie detector detects at uh, detects a molecular sweat level and an increase in your pulse, whether you're lying. But yeah. what if you are inclined in such a way that you actually believe that the lie you're telling is true because if you're 100 convinced that the lie you're telling is true then to yourself it's the truth and no, therefore absolutely. You, it's not and a you lie can, and you can absolutely do that you can make yeah. yourself believe something yeah you can do that there's so and many like, people that believe that twin paranormal are real <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly and they, and they nearly die almost every two videos yeah I don't know how they do it. I reckon it started <laughs> off and it was 18 sets of twins. And then there's just like one left. <laughs> <laughs> They've just got a f- clone factory. It's like, every it's, video, it's they like the, the, other, the new twins. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. There's pond. There's lake. Puddle, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. you're next. <laughs> okay, now. But this is, yeah, I, th- like, I think we need, like, we need a fresh... Just something fresh in the paranormal now. Well, this is this is what I was getting at. This is what yeah. I was getting at. You got twin paranormal and nearly dying every time. Yep. They're getting scratched. You look at their thumbnails, these are the most ridiculous thumbnails yep. ever. And you know, and then you got real paranormals not copying the titles, but getting close to saying the same thing. They don't say yeah, but really at dumb. the end of the day, they have to do it to compete to no, get no, people to watch is, their this, videos. This is what I'm this is what I'm saying. I'm not I'm not um, slating the channels who do it. The reason they do it is because the algorithm tells them to. You know that's why they do it. I'm not like I said. This is this is why why I said that I'm not against channels who do it. I understand why they do the clickbait titles. I totally understand because if you don't, YouTube doesn't push your stuff. Yeah, it's just the way it is. Sometimes I think they do it to annoy other people. For example, I've got an entire <laughs> folder dedicated to annoying you on my hard drive. What do you mean? I've got an entire folder with about 40 photos where purposely every single time you say, I hate thumbnail face. I take oh, 10 yes. thumbnail shots doing this. <laughs> Do you, you I'm not even joking. It's called thumbnail faces of a Mr. Gray. Oh my God. I got a freaking beard though coming into my bloody live stream saying thumb all the time and telling his bloody followers from his fucking gaming channel, uh, gaming streams to say thumb all the time. No, no. 
Do you know you, your thumbnail <laughs> faces? Do you know the ones that you hate? Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, and oh, every still. time you say it, I then take a new selection of these you faces. You do a shock face. Yeah, I'll do shock face, scared face, scared <laughs> point. It's great. <laughs> Tonight's thumbnail, I've cut my own head off and put it underneath the guy's arm. <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> I've done it already. I did it before I came on. I'm playing a game called Head Horse tonight. Just run. The... Are you? Yeah. What's that? Uh, so oh, no, think... no, don't so... tell me. Don't tell me. I'll, I'll get. I'll watch your stream. Don't, don't... Yeah. Yeah. It'll be. It'll be. A, it'll be a surprise anyway. Okay. It's. Uh, it's like a survival game, as far as I know. I'm just going through finding the weirdest games that I can. You're like my mate Rich. Yeah. <laughs> I work with him, and obviously yeah. we, we used to make video games together. But um, <laughs> he's, he'd still text me, "Have you heard of this game?" I'm like, "No, I haven't." I look it up; it's like one pound twenty on Steam yeah. or something. He loves the shitty cheap games. Oh yeah, <laughs> but these this is just like Thursday nights. You just find really shitty cheap games because, like, so the beard beard has live like, every day, so it's difficult to find like games that haven't already been seen and I don't want people to come on and then watch a game for the second time. But yeah, that's true. But at the same time, I like watching games that I know. I like watching people play them at the same time. I suppose so, yeah. Because like there's games out there, some of my favourite games ever, which I can't play anymore because I've completed them and I know all the story and stuff. So I like watching other people experience the same game I have. I still, I still think we need to we need to do a retro game race where we just pick a game retro and then race through that game. What do you mean? What do you mean now? First, first person to complete the game, you mean? Yeah, or just like see how far we can get in like an hour or something. Because I would like, for instance, I'd love to do Metroid again. That would be my choice. So if we got to choose one each, so we both played Metroid, and then you <sighs> I, chose that the next week's game. I'd be so up for that. I'm so I just think up it'd for be that. So good. I haven't played Metro since the NES. Since the NES first came out. <laughs> that's the last time I played And that's Metro. the one I'm on about as well, because it was such a good game, and it was so hard back then, even with the dexterity we had as children. Imagine it now. What game would I play? Would I, would I choose? I'm trying to think. Retro game. What game would I choose? You'd have I, to know be one, like a... I know one game that we would both choose, which would be like the, the, the third one. And it would be yeah. me and you playing through Metal Gear Solid, the oh, PS1 version. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> That'd be amazing. That. I'd love that. Turtles on the NES. Oh, that game was so difficult. It was the it was hardest rid- RoboCop. <laughs> Ridiculous. I have a NES somewhere. I have two of them. Yeah, me too, but, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I was playing Turtles on there about a year ago because I hadn't played it for years. I thought, I'm going to give Turtles a go. I haven't played it for ages. Oh my God, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it's so hard. It's How so long hard. do you think that game actually takes to complete from you start can to complete, finish? I'm pretty sure you can complete that game in 25 minutes. 18 minutes. Oh, there you go, 18 minutes. Eight, yeah. 18 minutes, that, and the one that got me was because I used to have, and I remember it as a kid, Robocop, right? Wh- which I watched one somebody you... do a run-through of that in 12 minutes. Which Robocop now? Robocop, the NES version. Is it based on the arcade games, or is it... But no, it's not based on the arcade games. Because I had... I, obviously I think I it know... was a claim game. Okay, because I know the arcade game... To the T, but I also on the ZX Spectrum I had a Robocop game, and one of them you had to do an E fit. Is that the oh, same? Oh no, 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 it's okay. not that one. Right, go on. And another game. I don't know if you ever played it. It was quite a niche one. It was called. It was based on a really twisted cartoon. I'm not sure if we spoke about this before. Um, Little Nemo, the Dream Master. No, I, I don't know that one. Like it was based on a really twisted <clears throat> 1920s cartoon about a kid okay. that falls to sleep. And his dreams kidnap him, right? But he has to, like, find... It's kind of like an Alice in Wonderland-esque kind of... And what you have to do is you collect candy and you feed candy to these animals. And then the animals eat you. And then you control the animal from the inside. <laughs> really? Yeah, I haven't heard that one. No, I have to look. I'll Such look a good there. side-scrolling platform game. Like, what, what, just um, amazing. What platform is one? Was it it was, that was Nez as well. Well, I'm going to be having a look at that later it, on. I think he's on. I think if, he may already it be on there. It probably is on there. Yeah. It probably is. So, on, honest, you will love it from start to... Because even the soundtrack is brilliant. I, I'm a big fan. I, I listen to soundtracks to this day. From the old 8-bit uh, uh, to, Me too. Tunes, to the 16-bit tunes. I, I still listen to them. I, sometimes I have it on in my car. And I have to turn it down when I drive past people. Because it's like... 40-plus-year-old 40, 40 guy listening to fucking 8-bit <laughs> tunes in his car. Like, uh, you know? No, no, not at all, because 
right? And I'm going to say this to everybody out there. If you're going to mock us, go onto your <laughs> Spotify or Amazon Music, Grapple Music, and just listen to the Koji Kondo Legend of Zelda suite from start oh, to finish and tell me so it's just... Good. Look, look, it's so look good. Look, I'm living the face. It is, it is so sensational. Good. And it just yeah. drives such emotion in your entire uh, body when it kicks in. It's wicked. Music does that to me, Mike. Yeah. Music and, like, video games do it to me. Certain movies do it to me. They give me an emotion, like, you know, yeah. a happy one or a sad one. And that's why I love that kind of thing. Like, especially what soundtrack in... invokes the most emotion in you? Well, from a video game? No, f- film? Oh, oh, it, oh. oh this, <laughs> there's way too many. There's a, there's, a couple, there's a couple that get me. So one that always gets me is um, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And, you know, right at the end when he's like... You, my friends, you bow to no man. Go yeah. on. And when, I, just... when that comes on, it's called bow to no man on the end, and I'm, I'm gone on it. Right, there's a couple of ones. It's going on Lord of the Rings now, because you just reminded me, and it just gave me chills thinking about it. Spoiler for, like, that film. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing, you know, the, 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 the Fellowship of the Ring, right? Please when... sell the song from Great Halls. Huh? <laughs> Please sell the Billy Boyd song. No, 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 oh. no, no. It's from the Fellowship of the Ring. And yep. I remember watching it at the time and I got so fucking upset. <laughs> and Gandalf, run, you fools. And he gets pulled down by the Aye, Balrog. You fools. Yeah. And he gets pulled down by the Balrog. And and you think, oh my God, Gandalf's dead. And they, they, the <laughs> hobbits go up on top and they're all yeah. like sad. And the music there, yeah. it gives me chills. It's, it's, it's amazing though, isn't it? Howard would sure with that soundtrack did fantastically. Yeah, it's so good. And yeah, that one like... Invokes an emotion. Uh, evokes an emotion. Um, anything by Michael Giacchino. Yep. I love Michael Giacchino stuff. Anything with piano stuff. I like piano or orchestral stuff. That tends I, to I'm, I'm a massive fan of like, <laughs> like you, 80s, 80s cinema. So Harold Faltermeyer. Which ones did he do? So, yes, people know him for Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, okay, but right. I, I, so I play, most of what I play on the guitar is TV or f- movie theme tunes. Yeah, yeah. And there is nothing that is more amazing than playing Harold Faltermeyer's <laughs> theme tune from Top Gun. Oh, God. But if you actually listen to that, right? It's and playing you in my head ha- right now. Pardon? <laughs> it's playing but in my head. Have you right heard now. the Hans Zimmer Harold Faltermeyer version? It is... Probably not. I'm possibly it's outstanding. Have, I don't know. I don't know. But that gets me. And like, whenever I'm, because I get a bit hyper sometimes, as some people may know. Uh, I love the Footloose soundtrack. Kenny Loggins Foot- was the king of the soundtrack. Footloose is bloody amazing. <laughs> I've seen that so many times. Apart from the fact it gave me testicular torsion. <laughs> Why? So I was, when I was working in the kitchen, I was. <laughs> Oh, you've we gone. Used to, we, used to, we used to have a really kind Wait. of... Wait. Oh, there you go. Your camera's going all skew iffy. Mine's fine. Hello? It must have been the internet then. You're back. Then. Yeah, it might have been the internet. Yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah so I used to work in kitchens when I was at uni. Yeah. And we had a really, like, cool kitchen. There was none of this shouty bollocks. We would just be having fun, have a laugh all the time. And when Kenny Loggins' footloose used to come on, I would start dancing and everybody knew this. So I was dancing away, dancing away, but Dave left the fucking fridge door open and I went balls straight into it. Two days later, I was in the hospital with a testicle that was the same size as my fist. Bright red. Even the doctor looked at it and just went... Oh, my God. (laughs) That was was extreme pain. Even the word testicular torsion. Oh, it was horrible. It's like... Yeah, it, it was horrible. And still to this day... I'm more careful when I dance to Footloose. <laughs> I can't help it. It comes on in the car. It's going... And they're like... It's definitely on my playlist. Yeah. <laughs> but no, an- another um, another piece of... Like, music for me, right? The m- music which gives me emotion. If I hear it on its own, I think, oh, this is really good. Right? I like this piece of music. Yeah. What, what is it? Where is it from? That's what I think, right? But if I've seen a film or I've played a video game and there's a piece of music from that and then every time I listen to that piece of music it, it reminds me of that part in a video game or yeah. part in a movie. Yeah. That's what gets me. 
It's like there's two ones that come to mind right now because one came to mind because I saw something about it yesterday. <laughs> You're going to think it's fucking shit. But right, um, Star Trek 2009, J.J. Abrams, right? Yep. In the beginning... Oh, no, 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 no. I know what you're going to say. You're going to bet the Chris Hemsworth death scene. Yes. I yes. Oh, but it, it gets, gets me, me every, every time. single time. Every time. Every <laughs> single time when the, the music kicks in. I, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. It gets me yeah. every single time. It and ruins even if I, your soul. Honestly, it's so... It's like... It's heroic and sad at the same time. Yeah. And, th- and that's... Again, that's Michael Giacchino. I, saw, I love Michael Giacchino stuff. He did all, the entire soundtrack to Lost, which I love. And yeah, that was the same thing. It had all these emotions. But another one it gives me, and it's like I said, the, the, there's many, but the two which pop up right now is the Star Trek 2009 one, and the yep. one is from The Last of Us. Have you ever played The Last of Us? Do you know what? I haven't. I own oh, it, and I haven't Pablo, played it yet. Honestly, honestly, it's, it's, it's a movie video game. Right. It's movie quality story telling... In a video game, honestly, you I you haven't played anything like it before. I guarantee you that. And there's music in there, which when it kicks, in, you think, "Oh my god, this is where this happens." Oh my god, heartbreaking. It's like it's honestly... yeah, there are there are a lot of things that can invoke that in you, though, aren't there? Oh, so like, much. Especially for people like that die hard love films as well. Yeah, yeah. I like it's it's strange, right? I'm not a depressed person. I'm really not. I have my down moments, obviously. But like some of my favorite music to listen to is the ones that make me sad. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, it's, if I hear right, so have you ever heard of Enstens? No. He's a guitarist, and he play. He does. He plays a lot of like movies, theme tunes, stuff like this. He's an amazing guitarist. I've no doubt. But he I've play, heard he play, him, but I couldn't. So he know. plays everything himself. So when I say he plays everything himself, he always plays um, lead rhythm and bass, and then just overlays it for his videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good. If you haven't heard of him. N S T N S. Uh, I think it's N N N S T N S one one seven. It's got some numbers after it. I'll have to look them up. Every single time, his version of the theme tune from Back to the Future comes on. <laughs> oh, but... <laughs> oh. <laughs> it is so good, right? And I actually paid for his tablature that I oh, really? on my yeah, nice. and it is, it, it is just it's a perfect arrangement. Yeah. And, and just go, just go and look for him because he's he's amazing. I'll I'll look him up after this, but not yeah, not the same. I I you know I don't just like music from things I love. I also like covers and you know like people's um, oh yeah interpretations of that same music. You know, done differently, like like mm. the epic version or quiet version, piano version, violin version. I'm a big fan of a lot of people. That, there's a lot of like really strange covers of David Bowie songs. Yeah, um, one of my and favorites. they are brilliant. One of my favourite cover of a David Bowie song was many, but one of them comes to mind um, was from the Watchmen series. Uh, Attica Ross and Trent Reznor. They did a cover of a David, Bo- David Bowie song. Um, ah, it's playing in my head. I can't remember the name of it. But it's so good. It's it's well, just we'll piano. It it's just piano and then it kicks into a crescendo. It's amazing. I love it. I will, I will absolutely look at it's it. It's so good. Yeah. In fact, that entire soundtrack of that entire TV show, The Watchmen, was so good. I didn't. I still haven't watched it because of how much I loved the extended version of that film. I loved the film. Some people didn't like it because. uh, Do you know the comics at all? Yes. Well, the graphic novel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the graphic novel. Yeah, Yeah, but like, there's parts of the graphic novel which are completely different than the movie. Yes, but when you watch the actual director's cut of the movie, with the uh, not. What's the, what's the what's the uh, the pirates not the pirates Tales of the Black Pir- Tales and Black Freighter Black Freighter yeah it's so good yeah, I do all right I'll tell everybody about that yeah it's, it's, so, it's Gerard Butler isn't it yeah Gerard Butler yeah the yeah, thing is the right, thing. I I loved the Watchmen movie when it first yeah. came out and it was only years later I realised it was an extended version I thought because yeah. I in fact no I started watching it on Netflix a while back I was watching it and all of a sudden it kicked into the Black Freighter I thought what the yeah. hell is this. <laughs> oh, oh shit it's the Black Freighter stuff yeah. I had no idea yeah. that was in the movie yeah you know, but until the ex- how, how important really I think it bugged me so much because how important is it that that extended version changes the film it absolutely realistically does. it changes the film it changes it, it completely changes how you feel about Osmandius. yeah yeah 
Well, and I think if if you if people ha- didn't like Watchmen, please go and watch the extended version. Yeah, it's so good because it I, flips. I loved it, and the comedian was my favorite character, even though he was an yeah. absolute shit bag. He's an absolute shit bag. He's my yeah. favorite character. It's, Je- it's Jeffrey Dean Morgan, isn't it? Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I like I like Jeffrey Dean Morgan yeah, as me well. Too, yeah. So, but no, um, but yeah, the Watchmen TV show. It's set, I think, about 20 years after the movie. Or 30 right. years, maybe, because the movie's 80s. Yeah. And the, the Watchmen was, I think it was set in 2018 or 19. Right. It's so, it is so good. And is it's, it good? It, it's so good. And it's it's a one-off as well. There's no second scene. Oh, that's it good. Was a, and it, not because it didn't do well. It was just that's how the story was made. Uh, that's good. I like it when they do that, do that and stick to it. Yeah, yeah. And But it's I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's... It follows both the graphic novel novel and the movie. Oh wow. It's okay. really, it's so good. And like I said, the soundtrack is Trent Reznor and Attica Ross. It's one of my favorite. It's prime, soundtracks. isn't it? It is prime it was on what, right? Uh, I can't remember now. Because I'm a bit I, dubious, so I still haven't watched the Lord of the Rings series because I haven't either, but I heard it was crap, another one. <laughs> right. I heard it was crap, right? Right. Rings of power, rings of power. Yeah, rings of power, yeah. I heard it wasn't that good, but I have people telling me, oh no, it's actually good. But then, so I, I haven't got, I've always wanted to get to it, but I haven't got around to it because it wasn't high up on the list. But then they announced the second season a couple of days yes, ago. Yes, they did. And they showed a picture of young Sauron. So I thought, right, I'm going to need to catch up. <laughs> I'm going to need to catch up. <laughs> oh, had they showed a picture of young Sauron on it? Apparently. Oh. Yeah. I didn't a- know that. Apparently. I just spoiled something for you then. No, no, not at all, not at all, no, because that would so, make, that would convince me to watch it. But like, I, ha- I have my problems with some Prime stuff, like what they did to Good Omens. I haven't watched that. I don't. I, don't, I haven't watched that. It's Neil Gaiman, um, David Tennant, and I do know what it is, yeah. but I've never watched it. And they ruined it with Jack Whitehall. I'm not sure who Jack Whitehall is. I know the name, but I'm not sure who that is. He's a posh comedian. Oh right, okay. Uh, yeah, so that that they ruined that. I loved the first series of American Gods. Again, never watched it. See, American Gods is is so enjoyable throughout the first series, and I think they'll just spoil it the second series again. Yeah, like, you know I couldn't best... say anything without spoiling it, but it, it's yeah, well, yeah. well worth. Do you a know watch. the best TV show to ever release on Prime? Uh, via Prime or on Prime? On Prime. Go on. The Boys. Have you ever seen The Boys? Uh, so again, I haven't, no. Oh, uh, it, it, Honestly, it is. it will blow your mind. It's basically if superheroes were bad guys and shitheads and bastards. <laughs> oh, that, that's... That, yeah. It's That'd so good. It's basically... it. it it basically, uh, with great power comes great responsibility, and they flip that on the side. With great power, they just turn into ego maniacs. And Sounds just like Hancock, what... but just like worse. Like a yeah. bit like Hancock. Well, fucking way worse than Hancock. Yeah. but it's got um, it's got Carl Urban in it. Oh, I like Carl Urban. Yeah, I like Carl Urban as well. Yeah. But he's he's a human, a normal person, and he's looking at these group of they they are the boys. Right. Tasked to like take down these superheroes who try to do everything. It's, honestly, I, I don't want to go too far into it, but it is so good, so good. I, I think I, I definitely because a few people have said that to me now, and I definitely need to start giving them a watch. Is that everyone's uh, talking about this baby reindeer at the moment, and I'm just not? Uh, yeah, a yeah. few people are talking about that, and uh, in fact, I mentioned that the other day. Where did I mention? Oh, on the live stream. I am I haven't watched it yet, but a few people said it's good. But I find do I find weird about that? Go on. Um, obviously, do you know? Have you you haven't watched it? You said no, no, I haven't watched it. No, yet, no. no, but it's about a person who got stalked. Yes, right? so, so another concept of yeah, another yeah. concept of it. Yeah, he had a stalker. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know how long. Like I said, I don't know the full story. I haven't seen it. But what I find weird is the person who wrote the Netflix show stars in the Netflix show has the as the person who's getting stalked. Right, is the real life person who got stalked. Okay. I find that very weird myself. Yeah. He's like a comedian, apparently. I don't know him. I find that extremely strange that, you know, if you had this such a bad time, I'm no doubt you had a bad yeah. time. You know, stalking is not a fun thing. But I I can't imagine, like, right, I've been stalked for however many years now by this person. Terrible. You know, I've had this bad time. I, I, I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to write a Netflix show, yeah. right? <laughs> and I'm going to be the star role in it as the person getting stalked. 
I mean, maybe it works for like the storytelling, you know, because he's the only one who knows the full details. But at yeah. the same time, I do find that very strange. I did find I did find her interview clip amusing the other day. I thought, but there's one I interview haven't, clip. I haven't seen it. I know she went on Piers Morgan. And she like, did. And there's this one TV. clip during the rounds. And he's like, so you've got a photographic memory. She's like, yeah, I can't explain it. I've had a photographic memory for as long as I can remember. And he's like, did you do well at school? She's like, I can't remember. It was ages ago. <laughs> 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 Cue the Curb Your Enthusiasm music. <laughs> it was just a perfect moment. <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. But I just, I just, I don't know. I just, I just find something a bit weird about that, that the person who it actually happened to is the starring role in the, the Netflix show. I find yeah. that weird. Yeah. It's like, if he'd if just you written were, it. Like, if he had written it, yeah. If he had written it, that's different. It's like if you were like a, a victim of I don't know, like what was that guy who got kidnapped um, by terrorists back in the eighties, British guy, and he was like prisoner for like about three or four years. And then, Terry Wait, remember Terry Wait? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know yeah, Terry Wait. Yeah. Anyway, Terry Wait was a guy. I think he was a journalist or something. He got kidnapped by, um, I think it was Libyan terrorists. I'm if I'm wrong about that, I do apologize. It was like it was Libyans. 40. They killed the doc as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Full circle. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was about 40 years ago. He got taken hostage. He was wait, hostage. wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? The 80s was 40 years ago? The 80s was 40 years ago. Probably. Shit on it. Yeah. <laughs> that means I'm 40 next year. <laughs> oh my God, you're old as shit. Yeah, I am. But it's okay, because right. i never be as old as Beardo. True. <laughs> but anyway, Terry Wake got taken hostage back in the 80s. I think he was held hostage for about... I'm going off memory, so I could be wrong. About two, maybe three years. And obviously, malnutrition, you know, I think he was treated not terribly, but obviously you're hostage in a different country. You're gonna, you know, It's not going to be a, a fun time. At least so he had good weather. <laughs> yeah. So He's imagine now, imagine Terry Waite now, if I was today, and he came out, I'm writing a Netflix show about my experience. I'm going to star in it. That's the same. That to me is the same thing as Baby Rain. I've already strange. got a title for it: The Long Wait. <laughs> yeah. You can borrow that, Tez. <laughs> Tez, I'm going old Tez, my <laughs> Libyan friend. <laughs> <laughs> We're saying Libyans. I don't know if it was the Libyans, so I apologies. Apologies to any Libyans. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> they're like, we get bad rap for everything. <laughs> Marty says us. us. They, sp- they they steal plutonium. <laughs> Blame Gaddafi. Yeah. Duck. <laughs> duck. <laughs> Gaddafi duck. <laughs> God. Uh, uh, I can't even remember where this conversation was going. <laughs> uh, it was the baby reindeer about writing a story oh, yeah, about yeah. yourself. Yeah. I just find it odd myself. Did you ever see the first cut of 120, was it 127 Hours with James Franco? I haven't Franco? watched the film. I know all about the story. But yeah, so obviously the, the guy has to cut it go for his own yeah. arm, doesn't he? Yeah. But on the first cut that they released when they <laughs> when they put it out at a film festival, there was one small mistake with it. Right. So obviously throughout the film, he him focused, his hands caught, and he cuts his hand off. And then at the film, you see the guy swimming, but they kind of get the footage wrong, so it looks like the, the cut, he cuts his wrong arm off. It looks like he's got oh, his really? arm back. <laughs> how, how do you make that kind of mistake in a film like that? I don't know. I was, I was actually like, but saying that, there's a company that that we like speak to and work with. Yeah. That was working at one of their. They have, they've got some adverts running at the moment, and it's getting ready to go for television. And <laughs> they spent like 250 grand on it, and they spelt custom wrong. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> How does that happen? They spelt it cut them. It is the biggest word on the screen. I will never understand how that happens. No, me. Honestly. Because I work with... Um, I work in a company that makes things for other companies. Probably for my company. Possibly, <laughs> yeah. 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 And we obviously, we have to make sure all the, the text, the writing yeah. is correct. I can't imagine that leaving the factory... With the misspelling, yeah. I just can't imagine it. You know, it's so for that to happen in a big thing like that, it blows my mind. Which brings us onto what is the worst mistake you've ever seen in a film, or your favourite movie mistake? Oh. Oh, I, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of any, but I know there's loads. I know there's loads. 
I like Boeing seven four seven in Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you five seven one is one of them. It's not that's in the Titanic just... as well. Uh, no, no, no. No, you five seven one. The fi- the film with um... Harry, not Harrison Ford. Is it you five seven one? No, no, that's uh, that's Red October. Hunter Red October. Is that where Sean Connery did his Russian accent and went, "Hello, I'm Sean Connery, <laughs> yeah, and I'm from." I'm Russia. Sean Connery. I'm from <laughs> Moscow. I'm Russian. <laughs> but no, you five seven one. There you go. That's what I think. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? We spoke about him the last episode. Liam Neeson. No. No. Mm. Matthew McConaughey. Matthew yeah. McConaughey, right? And yeah. it's actually a decent film. But in that, the, you know, the Americans get the Enigma code, the Enigma right. machine. They break the code, yep. and you know they win. But we didn't do it at Blackie Park or anything like that. Yep. Okay. Yep. But no, no, no. There's nothing to do with the British or nothing. It oh, was right. all the Americans. It was just the U571. <laughs> you can have that one, guys. On you can have that one. <laughs> but no, it's, uh, I, the thing is, I, I'm I'm one of those people who spot mistakes in films all the time, yep. and right now I can't think of any. <laughs> Other think while I re- try and remember. But there's so there's the, there's the, uh, there's the favorite one which everybody knows, which when we were kids would have been the myth of the ghost in Three Men and a Little Lady. Three Men and Baby. No, no. Before you get to but it, is it Baby? Three Men and a Little Baby. Before you get to that, right? I remember. I, I, like I said, I'm a couple of years older than you, right, yep. Papa? When I was in school, the VHS was going around and they were saying, yep. "Have you seen the ghost in Three Men and a Little yep. Baby?" It fucking terrified me yeah. as a kid. Absolutely, Honestly, yeah. it's scared. Whenever I, when I watched the film first a couple of times, never noticed it. When someone said, "Have you seen this ghost?" I'd like, no. And when I knew where the scene was, honestly, I, I, it scared the shit out of me because that's when, as a kid, I believed in ghosts big time. So, you know, but go on, carry on. Sorry. It just brought me to something. I just want to send it to you because I want to freak you out because I know you like you don't get freaked out very often. <laughs> You didn't see my live stream last night, Purple. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Um, but no. Right, on. have you, you... You may have already heard of this. And it's something I talk about quite often because I think it's brilliant. The ship that foretold the sinking of the Titanic. Have you Have you ever read this? Ever heard what, this? What, the Titania? No, no, no. So it's in a book from 30 years earlier called Futility. Right. Right, so let me uh, let me bring this bring the facts up for you so futility came out in 1898 yeah and it's about a ship called the titan yeah yeah yeah, yeah no I, um sorry the titan i was on about not titania sorry the, yeah the titan, uh, yeah. it crashed into an iceberg yeah claimed the lives of nearly three thousand people on board and no i i know exactly what story you're talking about yeah yeah and it's it's within like a it's, I'm pretty sure it's within a couple of miles of the actual place yeah. that it actually no, happened, I, isn't it? And it is known, it's... isn't it known as one of the like the, the the best coincidences in history? I I used to have a book on the freaky freakiest coincidences throughout history, and I know exactly what the story you're talking about. It was one of my favorite stories about the Titanic. It's yeah, it's it's just probably the story that that's the one that always gets me. Is that that's freaky? That is. Yeah. Yeah. But then you have to then dig into the fact of did the people, because the, there's the whole there's a conspiracy, isn't there, around the Titanic? Wasn't the Titanic? You know this Go one? On. No, I don't know this one. Yeah, no. there's a conspiracy that it wasn't the Titanic. Or let me find it because I don't want to get it wrong. The conspiracy goes that the Titanic was secretly switched with its sister ship, which was oh, called uh, da, 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 the Olympic. Oh, okay. I want to find the ones that really go into the, the in depth of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, it'll be absolute bollocks, but <laughs> it's a great conspiracy theory. Yeah, no, the the, the co- coincidences. I used to have a book of all that stuff over the years, like the uh, Abraham Lincoln and JFK one and stuff. Well, what was that one? Uh, that you know, the JFK was was he assassinated in Lincoln, and like they went to the uh, the assassin the assassin. The assassin in Abraham Lincoln fled to a no, was shot in a cinema, uh, a theater, theater, yeah, and fled to a library or something. And the JFK was shot from a library and fled to the theater. It's stuff like that. It's, it, I think it's grasping, but as a kid, I yeah, love that but, stuff. but but as a kid, you kind of buy into it, don't you? <laughs> oh, I loved that stuff when I was a kid. Yeah, but go, but finish your story about the three men, a little baby, by the way. 
Oh, no, I was just what, saying what that, was the, ghost? the three men and yeah, little but... baby was it was meant to be a ghost in the curtain, wasn't it? Yeah, but do you know what it was? It was a cut cardboard cut out of Ted Danson, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Ted Danson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't com- find out until I was like 12. I was like, damn it. I No, I found, like, I found out about that when I was in my 20s. I didn't, I, even in my 20s, I didn't think it was a ghost, but I only found out it was a cut out of Ted Danson when I was in my 20s. It, do, you, do you want to know a really interesting one? Go on. Right. So there is <clears throat> a, I want to get his name right. There's a man who writes medical books. And his name is Frederick F. Cartwright. Yeah. Right. And it's, um, Something that I can't, I can't remember the name of the book, but I will find it so I can put it in the description. Did you know that Mount, when Mount Vesuvius erupted, mm-hmm. it possibly saved humanity? At the time Mount Vesuvius erupted, there was a plague right. flying the world over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did they, did they clear everyone's sinuses? I mean, no, no. Basically, <laughs> basically, as the plague was coming through, it was, would have made its way through the aftermath of Vesuvius. Is uh, the eruption of Vesuvius yeah. pretty much wiped out the virus? Really? Is what yeah. is that a fact or is that's that a, that's uh, a medical fact? Really? Yeah. I mean, I can totally end, yeah. uh, believe that. Yeah, totally yeah, believe it's that. Absolutely insane. Oh, the, the book I, I was bought it when I was like 18, 19. I used to love weird shit like that. <laughs> and it's got really weird stuff in it. What's the name? Frederick Cartwright. I think it's Frederick F. Cartwright, his name was. Um, disease and History, it's called. Disease in History. Uh, disease and History. Oh, it's got a blue I, cover. I hope it hasn't got pictures, though, because I don't like gruesome pictures of medical No, stuff. it hasn't. It, well, it, it, <laughs> they're, they're more drawings because, okay. you know, I don't think there's going to be any photos from Pompeii, if I'm, if I'm honest. Why out of not? reach. Um, the, the A73 wasn't the best friend then. <laughs> no, what I mean is... The lenses. I, I didn't think stones. it was photos from fucking Mounts of Vesuvius. But what I mean is, because I thought it was general <laughs> medical so stuff. David Bellamy was there. <laughs> Here we have a big volcano. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crying out loud. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I think, so... Other other like weird shit in films. Um, the Omen. The Omen used to scare the life out of me. But that and had a lot what? of coincidental deaths, didn't it? Didn't that? Didn't that actually have did somebody who was don't... beheaded in it get beheaded by a? In I real don't. Life? I think that is a myth, though. Is it? I, don't I know thought the... it was real. I'm pretty sure that's a myth. The same with the Exorcist. Yeah, the Exorcist was all confirmed to be a myth. And yeah, so yeah. was obviously the poltergeist ones, apart from the yeah. skeletons, but they were real anyway, because that was expected. Yeah, re- yeah, real skeletons. <laughs> yeah, but that that that's normal. Yeah. That, that was never not normal. <laughs> it's it's very normal now. Yeah, I do know the story, mind of the old men. But I thought it was a myth, see. How did the best effects artist John Richardson die? Well probably happened. He actually did die. But it was like from a heart attack, like six months after yeah. the film. Right. <laughs> that's, what, that's what usually happens. Well, John Richardson didn't die till 2019. I, see, I bloody yeah. told you. <laughs> I told you. Yeah. Or was he, it someone yeah, he else? He got here. The set designer was famously ca- decapitated, and then I've just read the other things, and he died in 2019. See, honestly, yeah. it's amazing how many stories like that are surrounding horror yeah. films of the 70s and 80s. Because there was no internet back then. Nobody could prove it. <laughs> Very good point. <laughs> there was only the Sun newspaper. Oh, I'm, I'm surprised in there. But you'll be surprised that you, you like a story you've grown up. Oh believing. no, sorry, no. His wife got deca- His wife was confirmed decapitated. What in the film? No, in real life. Do you in the making? Yeah. So, uh, Liz Moore in uh, in the uh, blah, 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 blah. the set designer responsible responsible for the deca- decapitation scene in the Omen suffered a car accident with his wife Liz Moore. In August, while shooting a bridge too far, the car crash not only saw Liz decapitated in a way that looked identical to Richardson's set design on the film, but this also happened on Friday the 13th. Um, with ne- next, And then it says, but the myth then goes on to say it was next to a street sign that said Omen 666, 66.6 kilometres. I don't believe yeah. that for a no, but that, no, but that, it says that part was... Rubbish. No, no, I believe she yeah. died that way yeah. in a car crash. That's yeah. that's the part I believe. But the other stuff, I don't believe that for a second. No. But, but, but when when was a bridge too far? That was, what was that, 1974, wasn't it? 73? Because the old man was 1970. Uh, not the, yeah. 
Because what my point is, the Omen was 1976, right? And Just Bridge Too Far was 1977, a year later. My point is, my point is, right? Yeah. The myth that's, you know, the, the first of all, is the, 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 the special effects guy. Yeah. Decapitated during the yeah. making of the Omen. But no, it wasn't. It was his wife. It was his wife. Later. But yeah. no, no, that's, this is, all right. This, we're getting back to paranormal yeah. now, because I know stories. Right. He knows the story. <laughs> yeah. I think my light is starting to dim as well, but anyway. But um there's a pub where if you if there's a there's a, there's a metal steiner mug in this pub, right? Right. A haunted pub. Right. right. That apparently if you drink from it you die. See it's got right? rat poisoning. No no. <laughs> and what and apparently one um person back in the 80s said i don't believe this i'm gonna drink from it he drank from it and then he died from a car crash right he, he died from a car crash because he was pissed from drinking from the fucking moon no three years later but the story goes that he died because he drank from that mug mm. <laughs> i think people try usually try yeah. to connect connect like dots that don't actually yeah. exist yeah but that's, like, I, that's the way to you know, myths and legends have been built over the years anyway, isn't it? Exactly. Really? My- myths and legends, you know, they get twisted and, you know, changed throughout the years. Yeah. It's, it's in the he- any historical uh, event. Oh, absolutely. From, from I mean, look, like a h- hundreds of years ago. Look, I mean, look, at look, look, factually speaking, look how the, like, e- even, it's, it's not up for argument, even the Bible has had to get twisted and torn over the years since the, you know, since the Cromwell and Moore translated the King James Bible from what it was to what it yeah. is now, it's the like half of what it was, and it's just you, you know, and that it, historically we know that Henry VIII had that instructed that to be done to fit his narrative for what he wanted at the time. Yeah. How many times it had been had it been done before then? Because like my lot, like the French got hold of it at one point, <laughs> and if King Louis is going to get hold of it, <laughs> it could be anything. I, I think it happens so way more history. often than we know, I reckon. Yeah. Absolutely. With, I reckon it happened with all the important books. Uh, yeah. Yeah, me e- too. E- even down to the third Harry Potter. <laughs> 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 right. I think we should end it there now. Uh, yeah, because I've got a live coming up. I know you got a live <laughs> soon, so I'm I'm going to end it there. But I really enjoyed this. I yeah, really me too. enjoyed just ch- chatting balls. Me too. It's good. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's good, good to chat the balls. It's, I, I don't think I have to cut anything out, Papa, which no, is shocking. No, you don't. <laughs> Apart from that. <laughs> Apart from that. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, that was... Uh, I hope you enjoyed. You can I find Papa at P-A-R-P-L on YouTube. Yeah, double R-P-L. See, I, get, I get that right all the time. Yeah. And if you uh, this, like I said, the audio version will be up on Spotify soon. If you want to let us know what you want us to talk about, let us know in the comments down below. Or if you've got any questions... Question. There you yeah. go. If you have any questions, we'll answer them no matter what. No matter what they are. About no whoever. matter what. Until I edit them out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back again soon. Don't know when, don't know how. And me and Pavel will, like you said, if you want to leave your questions or topics, whatever you want, leave them down below and we'll get to them. Yes, anyway, I we hope will. you enjoyed. We're going to wave now. Wave He's ourselves waving. out. Ta-da, and bye for now. Bye for now then. <laughs>